Uh, let's hear more on the story brought you a little earlier this hour. Allegations of sexual harassment around Parliament expected to come to light in coming days. The Daily Telegraph today claims the Prime Minister could end up having to sack Cabinet ministers, potentially, should they be caught up publicly in the scandal. Uh, let's talk about this in the company of Jonah Williams, the author of Women vs Feminism, Why We All Need Liberating from the Gender Wars, and the Labour MP for Ealing, Central and Acton. That's Rupa Huck. Um, a very good afternoon to both of you. Uh, Rupa, if I can start with you. Um, we're told that Andrea Leadson, Leader of the House of Commons, flanked by the Prime Minister, will make a statement to the House of Commons at 3.30. What would you like Andrea Leadson to say? Well, I think that um, we do need uh, robust, strong processes in place. The problem with Parliament is that you've got 650 MPs. They're all individual employers. And the, the rules are lax if not non-existent, to be honest, at the moment. So we need a robust, consistently applied set of rules as opposed to just a quick fix for this crisis. Joanna Williams, do you reckon... Oh, sorry, go on, Rupert, carry on. Yeah, and it needs to apply to misogyny, abuse, uh, racism, homophobia, you know, all these things. Um, and it can extend into things like bullying as well. I think we need, as I say, a sustainable set of rules that are upheld from now on. Uh, Joely Williams, uh, Charles Moore in The Telegraph on Saturday uh, wrote about what he described as a culture of denunciation. Uh, you'd agree with him, wouldn't you? Yes, I would. I think this is really unhelpful climate and actually I think it's most unhelpful for women. It's an edifying for politics as a whole. The idea that, I mean, I think one thing that's really important we have to bear in mind is that we have no names at the moment. We have this vague climate of accusation and that's blurring some very serious allegations of rape in the current climate with decade old anecdotes of something that happened to someone in the back of a taxi. And I think this is unhelpful for politics and it's actually really horrible for women. Uh, Rupert Huck, uh, do, do you accept that what's happening here feels relatively new in the sense that allegations have been made? There isn't necessarily a, a legal process per se. Uh, somebody who, I mean, take for instance the the Weinstein case, You've, I mean, we're living in a strange time, aren't we, where we're making parallels 4,000 miles, miles across the Atlantic. But, you know, it's been made by people where you've got allegations that have been made. There is not necessarily a legal process, at least not yet. It may come in time, obviously. You've got, you've got somebody about whom the allegations are made who throws their hands in the air and says, yes, I've got a problem. Uh, but it, it's a process that, that feels quite unusual and new, doesn't it? I mean... We do know the uh, names of some of these people. We know that Stephen Crabb, the former Social Security Minister, was sending lewd texts to a young woman that he interviewed. We do know the stuff that came out about the sex toys being bought. In any other normal workplace, that would not be acceptable behaviour. But what you have in Westminster is a system where there's a lot of people with power swirling around. It's very imbalanced. It's the kind of place a lot of people want to work there. So, I mean, I've, uh, I, I think it's not just within Westminster, it's at all levels of politics. I, I've witnessed it myself and been on the receiving end, not as an MP, but I mean, I do think that um, in, in some senses, you say we're living in a different time. So things like uh, racism and homophobia, probably since the 70s when bum pinching and Jimmy, uh, uh, sorry, Jimmy Savile, as well as uh, Benny Hill, those people are all the norm. We have moved forward, but at the same time, that pervasive Westminster culture. So you talk about legal things. There's legal things as well as, as well as moral things. Do you know what I mean? So even if someone is not guilty of breaking the criminal law, is it morally acceptable to, if, if a female staffer feels un, uncomfortable buying sex toys on the command of their male employer? You know, it's just not right. These things need investigating. And it's sad it took the Harvey Weinstein case to expose all this. And it's sad that it is being exposed. But I don't think we should sweep these things under the carpet. And I'm glad they're being talked about. OK. Joanna Williams, do you accept that in Parliament, given the nature you've got some very ambitious uh, people who have a lot of power at their disposal and working for them, oftentimes you've got very junior, much younger people, often inexperienced, keen to sh you know, shin their way up the greasy pole, etc., that there might be a particular problem there. And secondly, do you accept what Rupert Huck says, that actually it's not just about legalities, this, it's about ethics and morality too? <laughs> I think we I think being asked to buy sex toys is in no way equivalent to rape. I think women are quite capable of saying no. If I, I don't think Rupert Huck them. said they were. 
Let's just no, no. But I think it's, it's I think it's really important that we keep the distinction clear. If somebody has a serious allegation, it should be taken to the police and not uh, become the subject of a secret WhatsApp group. It deserves to be taken seriously. And I think the problem is in the current climate, all of these things are being conflated. I think sexual harassment has occurred. I'm not saying it's not an issue at all, but it's an issue of power and it's an issue of who has power in the workplace. And the fact that we need to remember today is that there are now more women members of parliament than ever before. And that's something we should be celebrating. That's a really positive message that we should be giving to young women today. The danger is that young women are hearing time and time again now that women at work are treated as victims. They are the subject of sexual harassment. And that situation is not being put into context where they're told actually some of these allegations are simply jokes or something that happened decades ago. There's never been a better time to be a woman at work. To, at work. There's more women MPs than ever before. Go for it. There's a world of opportunities waiting for you. Instead, they're bombarded with this narrative that to be a woman is to be a victim. And that's going to backfire by putting young women off entering careers in politics. Oh, that's an interesting angle. Ru go on, Rupa. It's just not good enough to pat ourselves on the back and say that uh, there's more women than ever before. But these things are unacceptable, no ifs, no buts. And I think they need to be called out. And we shouldn't just sort of hush them up and say boys will be boys, which seems to be what is being said. This is just hijinks. These things that are going on, I think I'm glad that a light has been shone on this. I mean, I myself, as a young, in the 90s, 20-something, uh, remember uh, when I was at the European Parliament, I was working there, I remember um, a male MEP with wandering hands. I didn't say anything at the time because the power relation was so imbalanced. I was a postgraduate student. I didn't say anything until, actually this is the first time I'm ever saying it out loud now. Um, and that pervades to, to this very day that there is such an imbalance of power relations in the world of politics. You have powerful men uh, women don't speak out for fear mm. of reprisals. We need an anonymous culture of reporting. It's cultural as well as it's an HR issue. In no other adult workplace would you get anything comparable to well, this. Well, just on that point, Rupert the, Hogan, the you know, is... John, John, just hang on a sec. Um, uh, there will be some people listening to this who will say, OK, uh, Rupert Huck, that, that's, that's very brave of you to make that point. It's, uh, it's sad you've got to, in a sense. Um, you, could, you should set an example as an elected parliamentarian now by going through a legal process to ensure that that MEP faces the full force of the law? I mean, this is sort of historic, but it's happening now. We need, well, so as Jimmy I say, Savile. a process for the future. Mm. We need a process for the future. And I think that the problem is, it seems like this statement today at 3.30, I hope it's not just that something is seen to be done. We need okay. to stamp on this for all and stop it recurring. And why are we blaming women for this? I mean, we also need to... Um, turn our focus on the perpetrator as well yeah. um, and you know most men MPs are perfectly decent people okay. so those blokes as well owe something to their uh, you know less ethical colleagues and we need to stamp this out once Sorry, and for all. Sorry, uh, uh, Williams, just time for one final point really. I, w yeah, go on. Yeah, the, pr the problem is that unsubstantiated claims about things that may or may not have happened 30 years ago can today end careers. And this is a really seedy way of doing politics. We should judge politicians on their actions, their policies, their views, not what they may or may not have done in a lift or in a drunken taxi journey 30 years ago. Joanna Williams and Rupert Huck, thanks both very much indeed. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Uh, some more of that breaking news reports.